G'day, I'm Clive and welcome back at the Armadale Reptile Centre with the lovely Lucy. Um, we're looking at the Death Adder today, the Southern yeah. Death Adder, isn't it? Yes. Yep. Yep. Southern or Common Death Adder. Common. There can be no one as both names. Or altogether Common Southern Death Adder. Yeah, oh yeah, just a Common Death Adder, you know, yeah. just the usual. Yeah, no, nothing bad, one of the deadliest snakes sort of thing. <laughs> <isn't there? laughs> yes, no, they're. They're common death adders because they're found across Australia, so they're common to multiple parts of Australia. Um, but southern death adder is more what we call them over here because they're restricted to the southern regions of WA. So you can, they can be known by both names. So we've got more than one type of death adder then? There are. Um, it all depends on their location. So, for example, you've got your southern death adder, but then another type of the death adder you have is the Pilbara death adder. Um, or the Barclays death adder um, and it all just depends on where they're from so uh, death adders are usually split by location and um, is there much difference between them? a great deal of difference will come in their coloration um, their coloration is hugely based on their environment um, because they are stealth camouflage and ambush predators so if they don't blend in perfectly to their surroundings, well, they're not going to eat. Well, we're around the southern death adders. We uh, are. We'll, we'll, yes. we'll talk about the southern death adder today, or the common death adder. Yeah. I like the word southern, sounds better. It does. It doesn't sound so um, common. plain. Yeah, yeah. boring. <laughs> so, the length of a southern death adder, what's the... Uh, so they're about, oh, a good individual is about a metre. So they're naturally shorter, stouter, but wider individuals. Um, and that all entirely comes from the fact that they live a very, very, very different lifestyle to other elapids. So the elapids of Australia are predominantly are active hunters. So they will move to catch their prey. They will actively search for something. Death adders are unique in the fact that they are camouflage ambush predators. So because of this, they have gotten a very uh, strong reputation of being very stubborn animals. They will not move. Um, so it is unfortunately an animal that people come across without even knowing they've come across it um, until it's too late. Um, they will sit there and you could literally step on them and they still won't move. Um, so that's all to do with the way that they hunt and the way that they feed. So um, a death adder is designed not for speed, hence the stout short bodies, um, but they're designed for strength and, um, and speed of bite. So um, a death adder typically will sit with um, its head and then it will curl around and then its tail is by its head as well. So on the end um, of the tail of a death adder is what's known as a cordial lure. So the end of their tail is very flexible um, and it's big and long and it wiggles. So it's meant to intimidate or um, look like a worm or a bug or a grub or even just when they're under the leaf litter, just something moving is interesting for um, a small mammal or a small bird. Uh, then they come on over to investigate and little do they know that the head of the death adder is right there um, and then it's a strike um, straight up. So death adders actually have one of the fastest strikes in the world. They are incredibly quick um, yeah, and you they, don't see it coming. People have said they've been up to 250th of a second for them to strike and get back to where they started. Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm not, I wasn't aware of the exact number but I, it was. It's, whew, it's quick. Yeah. It's very, 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 very quick. Um, so their whole life strategy is very different. Um, so they also don't commonly uh, inhabit urbanised areas um, as they require uh, undisturbed ground for them to be able to hunt. They require leaf litter and um, refuse for them to be underneath. Um, and they can then come out of very quickly so that they can strike. Um, urbanised areas are not ideal for them. So death adders are probably something people come across more bushwalking than anything else. Um, but at the same that, if you're walking on a 
pathway, say the Bibbulmun track, which is a quite a clear pathway. The it's majority of the time, yeah, there is sections, yeah, okay. so be aware. Walking on the Bibbulmun track, especially in autumn time and the leaves are all down, you may, yeah, may put your foot close on. Yeah. But again, as long as you're wearing your correct PPE, so your long pants, your boots, um, chances are you won't even know that he did it even if he tries to. Um, the issue comes when people are walking barefoot in particular, um, or thongs or anything along those lines. So bites around the ankles and the feet are common with a death adder, um, where it's hands and things like that for other sorts of snakes. Um, so they are incredibly special in that way. Um, and they also go against a very common rule that people have. So a lot of people believe that you can tell whether a snake is venomous or not by its head shape. Um, there's an idea that uh, an elongated face, so a neck that goes into the head and there's not a great deal of distinction, um, and a nice rounded shape is typically a venomous animal and the triangular sort of shaped head where it flares out, comes back and then you have the neck, is a python. Unfortunately, the death adder has that triangular shaped head. Um, so he certainly goes against the whole idea of that. Um, so that's not a good way to tell the difference between venomous and non-venomous. The only thing that you should be thinking is I don't know what it is, so I'm going to treat it as a venomous animal. Um, and regardless if it's python or not, it should be left alone. So it shouldn't matter what it is, it should always be um, left to its own devices. In future we've got a couple of videos of two snakes coming out, uh, the opposite way around, where people think they're venomous and they're not venomous, so look out for them. That's, yes, that's very true, that's the Aspidites. Yeah. So you mentioned about them they're catching their food. What what is their main food? So. They do seem to prefer mammals and small birds. So animals that you would imagine eat ground dwelling insects um, and little skinks or, or bugs that are crawling across the ground. Um, it's those sorts of animals that they're targeting um, to grab and they are incredibly patient um, it could take days before something comes across them um, and even then even if they something comes across them if it's not in exactly the right spot they might miss or it might be too far away or anything like that um, adders are very unique um, we don't have uh, many adders in australia the elephants far outweigh them um, Adders are closely related to vipers, um, so the only difference that makes to these guys is that their, their fangs and their jaw are highly, highly mobile. Um, so it's, adders are a difficult one for us to work with um, because any sort of restraint on them uh, around their face, if you need to, um, is highly dangerous. Um, because you could be holding it as firmly as you would a leopard, knowing that you're not going to get bitten. Um, but an adder has a very strong ability to turn its turn just one half of its jaw around and get you on the thumb, for example. So they are considered a bit more of a high risk animal to work with in in this industry. Um, but in terms of coming across them in the wild, well, I would consider you very lucky to have come across one in the wild. Um, Perth is by far their northernmost distribution. Um, there's been very few accounts of them in the metro area, um, but if you come out towards the, the hills and things like that, um, then you're more likely to come across them. But like I said, bushwalking is probably the only reason you'll um, come across them like that. If, if in the UK and watching, a lot of you will probably know, or probably not so many people, because when I was living there, not many people realise that the UK's only got one venomous snake and that's an adder yes. and a lot of people mix it up with the, uh, the other snake, I think it's a grass snake over there so if you're going to go w w uh, walk in places like the Canuck Chase where you've got all the forest and you've got a bit of swampland keep an eye out because they will come onto the walkway there and they will sun themselves.
I remember I was over in England and I was walking down the Canic Chase hmm. and I'd stopped and I was leaning over like this and people were walking up the track saying, you're right, because yeah, I'm just watching this adder and they all went, so, yeah. so, but I was well back, I was about six feet away from it and I was just watching it in the grass on the side. So in the UK you got one and that's the adder. But let's get back to the death adder here. Yeah, um, adders are a little bit different as well in the fact that you can get a lot closer to them or you can push your luck with them a lot further before they do anything. Um, they, because they are so ambush orientated, they are not quick animals to move, to actually move their own body. Um, they're quite little stout animals, so they don't move very, very fast along the ground. So their whole defense system is, you can't see me. Um, so they want to maintain that for as long as possible. Could come to the next, coming from that, you say, when they have struck the animal, they don't die instantly. Not always, no. So, it's a lot of people ask them how will it catch its food and eat it. Yeah, yeah, it's quite straightforward. They then um, uh, are able to utilise pheromones and scent trails um, to be able to find the prey animal that they've um, envenomated. So uh, if you can imagine that sort of venom can affect us quite quickly um, and, you know, we're about... On average, we could be anywhere from 80 to 100 kilos, um, but they're striking a little marsupial that's 500 grams, um, maybe a kilo if it's you know a big one. So it does work significantly quick um, for them. So they don't have to travel often travel very far, um, and they uh, will you know get up and move along and find the animal. Um, quite often, the animal will succumb to the venom in terms of paralysis or partial motor function um, impairment um, and then it just needs to wait it can see it it can just wait um, and then and then have have its meal that'll work very hard for and they, they give birth alive they do yeah. yes we are very lucky in in West Australia that we have quite a few of live birding um, snakes um, they give birth to, on average, it's about 10 to 20 individuals um, at a time. And like all other elapids, mum gives birth and mum doesn't mind anymore what happens to the children. It's their own, own, um, own life after that. So they are fully formed when they're born. Um, they have every, every manner of defence that they might need um, at that point. And the, the actual vote on the misconception that the young snakes have a stronger venom? That's also uh, a myth, yes. Um, biologically, they are significantly smaller than an adult. Fangs are smaller, venom sac is smaller, everything is smaller. Uh, again, doesn't mean that they can't hurt you. Um, people can be allergic to proteins in the venom all the time. Um, you could have an underlying condition that you never knew about and something's been um, brought to light by it. But um, the, the chances of it penetrating your skin is low, it's particularly in like certain areas like calluses on hands and things like that. Um, but then on top of that, the chances of the venom circulating your blood, um, your lymphatic system into your blood um, and then causing an issue is, can also be quite low. But it's not, not there. There is always a risk um, with everything. So um, it's still very good to be conscious of them but there is no need to be more afraid of them um, than an adult. Um, so, yeah. Well, if you're doing the wrong thing, be afraid of the adult and the baby. Well, so that's very true. That's very true. Right thing. So they, if, if you do actually come across one, what's the best way for people to react? It's simply walk away. Um, you don't have to worry a great deal about um, the striking distance for them because you generally you have to step on them. Um, before for them to react or step very very close to them um, and this is why they can be a bit more of a difficult one because you often don't know they're there um, so you don't mean to um, interfere with them and it's an accidental interference 
Um, but if you do spot one, um, he's very much hoping that you didn't and he's waiting for you to move on. So you're very safe to just move away from him. So again, it's the general rule of half of his body length? He can strike to half of his body length, um, but with the, that species, um, you have to be incredibly close for him to even try it. Um, his whole defense is, you can't see me. Um, him striking at you before you've gotten close enough to him or trying to make himself visible, he's just put himself in more danger. So he's not going to do that. So if you are potentially within that striking distance? He's not going to move. No. So if you're within that striking distance, you would stand there for hours on end. Um, it's very unlikely that he is going to move. They are incredibly stubborn, like I said. Um, the the incident rate for death adders is so incredibly low. And still with the, just to be safe, back off gently. Just back off gently, quietly and slowly. Um, snakes in general, their eye, they, ha they have, they can see, their eyesight isn't overly developed. Um, what they react to is sharp, quick movements. Um, any sharp, quick movement could be food. So naturally they're like, just in case, I might just launch myself at it anyway. So being slow, being precise, being a deliberate in your actions, they are like, well, this isn't a threat to me. I don't see why I need to potentially bite, envenomate, and then not be able to eat for a period of time. So. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have please go down below click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell next to it and select all so you can be notified of all future videos hit the like button the thumbs up and if you are already a subscriber again i thank you very much and uh, thank you you're very welcome